Today on the Skid Factory, I thought I was going first. Well, who's running the show? Well, I'll do the today or welcome back stuff. You can do the mm. other bit. All right. All right. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Today, we're going to take the vape out of this Subaru and inject it into that one. Really? Vape jokes? It's not 2018, bro. Why don't you throw some head gasket jokes in there too? They're hilarious. If you've been following the Skid Factory for a little while, or taking any notice at least, you probably would have picked up that I have a pretty long experience with Subarus. Basically did my apprenticeship at a Subaru dealership and continued to work on them for many years afterwards, among other things. Uh, eventually had my own business with, along with Miles, or Dos Vader as the MCM kids would call him. So I know a bit about them. I've owned lots of them, and I do like them. For all their faults, they've got a lot of things going for them um, from an engineering and driving point of view. Uh, they're quite a safe vehicle to drive, which is why I like my wife and children to be in one most of the time. And this car here was one of, it basically was our family car until recently. It's got a lot of Ks on it. It's got 305,000 kilometres on it. Still runs like a charm. It's dead stock. Never done anything to it. Just changed the oil whenever I felt like it, occasionally, and never, never let us down. It's in good nick, the body and everything's all sweet, the interior's really good. Um, it's basically everything that this car isn't. This car I bought just to get the driveline out of. I've no idea what happened to it. It's got less Ks on it than this one. Uh, the driveline is mint. It goes like a well-performing car. Everything works but the body is just a train wreck. I don't know what the previous owners did to it, but they've managed to completely destroy it to the point where it's basically gonna go to the, to the scrap metal when we finish pulling the good bits out of it. So the main plan of this is, I'm gonna build a first car for my son who is nearly 16 years old. So, to me, this is an ideal car for him. I don't know whether he thinks it is or not, but I've already been a, a teenager and went through all that, and I know a few things about what you get up to when you're that age and what's a suitable car for you. So being a, a dad, I came up with some things that I thought were required to keep my um, precious kid safe when he's going to be a bit of a, probably a bit of a rat bag as you do at that age. So... The Subaru was a, a thing that I figured would be a pretty safe car for him to own. It's got sort of a lot of airbag safety and all that sort of stuff, crash safety, that sort of thing. That's all good. But it's also four-wheel drive. It's got a lot of dynamic safeties that will stop you getting in a situation where you're going to need airbags and that sort of thing. And that's what we're, gonna, what we're looking for and also what we're going to enhance on when we do the build. So for those who aren't in Australia, we have a thing called provisional licences. So when you're 16, you can get your learner's permit. You have that for a year. You have to do 100 hours of driving. It's all got to be log booked and stuff like that. Some of it's got to be night driving. Once you've done that, then you can go and do a, an actual driving test to get your provisional licence, which means you can drive by yourself under some certain provision. It's all pretty pretty um, common sense based, so this is the car that's going to be his P car. It's all pretty exciting for a dad. Pretty much anyone who's, be, who's found out they're going to become a father is probably, the, if they're a car guy, one of the first things they think about is, ooh, what, what sort of car am I going to build for them when in 16 years time? And I bet you there's a lot of people that did think that. It's just one of those dad things that comes into your head. What can I do for my child when in the future? So that's certainly something that I've been thinking about for a long time now. Um, he can already drive. I taught him to drive many years ago. I think his first, the first manual car that he drove was Mod Max, and I think he was about 11 years old then. I think I've got a video of that somewhere. 
So um, he's quite capable of driving, but there's a long way to go after that to actually teach you proper car control and that sort of thing. So we're going to hopefully get into that sort of stuff as well with him. And it's all in the name of keeping you safe. So um, that's the main thing. The plan, other than ripping all the good stuff out of this, is basically this car is auto. So in my opinion, you shouldn't be learning to drive in an automatic car. Yeah, sure, you can drive an auto later, but you should be able to drive both. You should be able to understand the clutch control and that sort of thing. Um, so getting a manual licence is a must to me, and it's, it's not that big a deal. So the car's got to be manual for a start. So that's what this car's for, to pull the manual transmission and everything out and fit to this car. There is quite a few differences in the cars. In the past, Subarus were basically the, the chassis were built to accept any of the drivetrains available. But when they got to this age of, of this Gen 4 car, um, they started using five-speed autos and, and the, the five-speed auto cars had a cross-member point in a different spot in the floor, so the floor pan's a little bit different. It's pretty easy to get around, but it is something that, that you do have to do some minor fabrication to to get past. If it's a really basic car with a four-speed auto, you don't have to worry about it. It's the same thing, so it all just bolts in. But I've done it before. We previously owned another one of these with a um, twin scroll uh, turbo engine in it many years ago, and I ended up selling that to a good mate, and it's since become quite a famous car on the internet. And we basically did exactly the same thing to it. We fitted a six cylinder and six speed, and I did the same mods at the time. That was when I first found out that they were actually different. It's not something you really notice unless you try and fit the, the wrong thing to it. So um, I know what I'm up for. Uh, the rear end of the cars are completely different diff drive shaft. Everything is all different because of the, to suit the different transmissions, diff ratios, the diff type is completely different. Uh, so that's all going to come out. I've got some, just some eBay exhaust parts. It's got to sound cool. These engines sound quite nice when you open them up a bit. Um, there's no dub-dub noises coming out of it because it's actually a, a, a balanced, even fired engine rather than something that's firing in weird patterns like a, a box of four. It should sound pretty smooth. I'm not going to make it too loud because the last thing I want is for him to be um, preyed upon for being an obnoxious uh, kid by the, the law. So... Um, Whilst ever I'm in charge and I'm building it, it's going to be the way I want it for a start. Once he's an adult, he can do what he wants, but for now, I'm going to build it the way I think it should be. I've got a Haltech 2500 ECU. Um, the reason for that is because these two cars are actually different series. That's, there's a facelift point in between, and the wiring system typically changes between the two facelifts. I don't know why Subaru does it. The body and the chassis in sort of platform is the same but they always change the wiring system between um, updates and I don't know whether this is going to work with the manual ECU out of this car so Haltech makes a plug and play setup for them it works really well it was basically designed by a guy that worked at Haltech that owned one of the cars so he sorted out every little thing the dashes and everything work so it's pretty sweet so that's going to go in, we're going to put a dual wideband in, just get it tuned in A, and it'll make sort of nice linear power and sound okay. Um, next thing on the list is also brakes. These have got good brakes on them, they're big, they've got 316 mil front rotors, which is about 10 mil smaller than the Brembo equipped cars. They, they're quite strong for the size of the car, they're pretty heavy. It's got big ventilated back brakes on it. All we're going to do is just upgrade it with some new um, slotted and good quality pads uh, from Golby's and that should do the job. This car's got coilovers in it. I don't know whether they're any good. We'll, we'll just inspect them when we get it out. But if they're OK, I'll probably just fit them because this thing's got what I think is the wrong suspension in it because it's really low and it shouldn't be. It's had the original stuff replaced and I think they might have used the wrong struts or something. So it kind of crashes and bangs over stuff. So we'll, we'll get to that when we pull it, this car apart and figure out what's, what's happening with it. First thing we've got to do is get them up in the air and we're going to turn this car that's quite compact into a whole shed full of 
bolts and cross members and junk and then try and sift out the bits that we want to keep and the rest of it's going to the dump. So let's get stuck into it. Both cars are powered by Subaru's 3.0-litre EZ30 flat-six engine. Subaru originally released this engine in the Outback in the year 2000. The EZ30 was a clean sheet design that was further developed in 2004 with an improved head design including variable cam timing, variable valve lift and an improved exhaust port layout. As mentioned by Al, the engine from the black wagon has less kilometres and is in better condition hence why it's being swapped. We're removing both the front and rear cross members and dropping them out the bottom. This includes removing many items including the exhaust, tail shaft, front drive shafts and lower control arms. The trolley jack and stands are positioned under the cross member. The remaining bolts are then removed and the car is raised on the hoist, leaving the engine and transmission in situ. Already paid for itself, eh? Bloody oath. The turbo I'm talking about. Doing its job. The Subaru 6-speed uses a pull-type clutch which requires disengaging before the gearbox can be removed. This is a trap for young players and is often overlooked. The dowel pins on the block are almost always corroded which can also cause you some mischief when trying to separate the transmission from the engine.
The rear crossmember is held in by 12 bolts. Once the tail shaft, shock absorbers and handbrake cables are removed, the complete assembly can be dropped out from underneath. That's pretty much all the gear we need out of the donor car. I've still got to just get inside and pull the clutch pedal and um, master cylinder and that sort of thing out and the brake pedal itself. You just have to swap the brake pedal over because it's narrow. So we'll get in there and do that before it heads off to its... Um, you got a, you got an eBay link for the, for the... Very bleak future. eBay link for the parts for that car? Rich, yep. rich selling eBay parts or what? It's a, it's a core, so you'll need to rebuild it. You can find it at the Noosa tip if you want it. Um, so we've pulled out everything, basic cross members and all that sort of stuff. You don't have to do it that way, that's just how I choose to do it because I've got the equipment. Um, I may just put that diff in that car, the whole rear end in, or I may just pull the diff out. I haven't decided yet. The diffs between the two cars are different. Um, the five-speed auto cars have a different differential altogether. It's not even the same appearance. That's an R160 diff. Uh, some of these have R180s in them, depending on the year and the spec, um, like a GTB turbo will, can have an R180 diff in it, but it's not as good as the SDI R180s. It's still got small drive shafts, so there's a lot of little differences, but for this application, it's not gonna matter. Um, this is a, what they call a long ratio six speed. Um, this is the sort of entry level six speed box, excluding the newer Subaru six speeds that are not really anything like this. But as far as like SDI six speeds and that sort of thing goes, this is the entry level version of it. It's got no bells and whistles. There's no sort of front um, LSD. There's no um, DCCD control in the rear or anything like that. It's got no internal oil pump. So it's real basic. Uh, there is long ratio versions out of later model STIs that have all that stuff and there's older ones that have short ratio gears, like there's just heaps of them, so kind of, it's very strong still, like you can, you can break them with a turbo H6 or a really powerful, like anything over 450 kilowatts, you're probably going to start stripping gears on them, but they're very, very strong gearboxes and very good value for money if you, especially considering the bad history of Subaru 5 speeds. These things are, are really good for the money. So that's all good to go. That'll just get a clean up. The clutch is dead. I tried to do a four-wheel drive skid out in the car park a while back and, and I only made clutch smells. So I got a new heavy duty clutch for it, ready to go. We just got to pull that one off, get the flywheel machined. Um, if you're fiddling with these things, if you've got a legacy Liberty, um, the clutch isn't the same spec as an SDI, so if you want a heavier clutch, just order an SDI clutch instead. It's the, the standard one's heavier, and then you can H, HD it as well, which is what I've done, and you don't really, it doesn't really change the drivability or anything like that. It might be a slightly heavier pedal, maybe, um, but not some, something you'll get used to pretty quick. So easy upgrade if you're gonna start driving it like a lunatic, is just put a SDI HD clutch in it. Uh, we've had, we had a look underneath the manifold and this has been sitting around for about a year in the yard. Um, I haven't moved it around a fair bit, but uh, the rats have been in there. Could have been where it sat in the yard for the last year before I got it as well. But they've eaten into the wiring harness, so I'll pop that manifold off and just swap over the new manifold. If you've ever worked on a Subaru turbo engine, the inlet manifold is something that you'd never want to go anywhere near because it's so complicated, if particularly the later model plastic ones. These are nothing like that. They're so easy to work on. You can stick your hand underneath it and go like this. There's heaps of space. Very simple. You just pull those big plates over the injectors off, undo some bolts and it pulls off. Really easy to work on. It's got O-rings on it instead of gaskets. There's a lot of things that are better about six cylinder engines, if I'm honest. But they're even better when they're turbo. Yeah, right? they're they're good when very good when they're turbo. But you made a video on that actually. Yeah, I've done heaps of turbo Hang six on. cylinders. Hope they made a few videos on turbo H sixes. I think we have. Yeah. Point to the corner. Sweet. 
So um, we're just going to pull, pull it all down and give it a clean up. They have leaking problems behind the front cover, but it's a big job to, to stop it. And it's generally speaking, it's not a very severe leak and I don't worry about it because it's just a massive job to get the front cover off, chains off, back cover off, heaps of O-rings and goop and crap everywhere. It's a, it's a fairly big job. And for this application, it's just not it's just not warranted for the amount of oil leakage you get. It's just like a bit of a stain around the oil filter area, and that's about it. So we're, you're using <coughs> this engine, not the one from the I'm just going to use this engine because it's got 220,000 Ks. That's got 305, and that's starting to get chain rattles when you start it up, although I don't drive it very often, so it sits for days between. But we'll stick this one in. We'll keep that for a spare, um, maybe for a rebuild later on, depending on what happens with the car. And all this other junk, some of it will just go in the back of the car and go to the, to the scrap. Some of it I'll just keep it for spare parts like front hubs and brakes and stuff like that. It's always handy. Stuff that doesn't take up too much space just to keep it hanging around. Um, we pulled the coilovers out. Woody says they're shit, but they just, look like, they just look like every other coilover but with a different anodising colour on it. Um, I don't buy into this. That's not a good coilover because they're not the ones I've got. They're all just made in Taiwan. There's really no difference in the quality of the manufacturer of them. If you're gonna get into semantics about valving and stuff, it's a 300,000 K old 15 year old Liberty that's gonna be driven by a peep later. It doesn't matter. Are you triggered, Alan? I am triggered because I hate it when people talk shit that they really have no proof of. So they're going in. We'll adjust them up about a kilometer because the thing was it's got like scrape marks inside the plastic guards and stuff and they really look, they look like shit when you lower them too much anyway, pretty much like any other car. Um, a car has a ride height and it should be a certain height, not dumped on the ground because that's not how a car works if you want to use it as an instrument for transport. So what, what's If you just happening? want to park it and look at it and go look how sick and, sick and low my car is, then yeah. sure. But that's all for today. You can talk about Subarus for years on end. I need to, like, I'm actually, I'm going to ask you to maybe do that whole thing again. It's not going to happen. Why not? Because. Okay. <laughs> so, thanks, right. thanks for watching. See you later. Thanks for watching. Buy some merch. Look at my shirt. It's buggered. You can still buy these. Dave Holsaw shirts. Hi, Dave. Get on to the HTTPS forward slash colon something forward slash the skidfactory.com thanks for watching You gotta let me talk when it comes to me, bro. Yeah, well, you just talk you know, for too long. Yeah, well, no one's ever told me that I talk too much before. <laughs> Rumbles, you're famous, mate. Everyone wants to see you on the show. Rumby. <whistles> you're a good looking dog. He's the eye candy. He's the best looking one out of all of us. Yeah, I don't think anyone was <laughs> thinking otherwise. Hey mate, there's no bones. No. It's like it's perpetual energy. Just keep looping it. Yeah. Nugget garage stuff. Ticket 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 ticket. It's a whole show. <laughs> yeah, nugget, yeah, nugget, yeah. nugget, nugget, nugget. <laughs> It's a whole show. Yeah, nugget, yeah, nugget, yeah. nugget.